My name is Greg Friedrich, and I've been building cars my whole life. I have a shop called Gizmos. Our cars are hand-built. Our race cars win car shows, and our show cars win races. Our cars are as beautiful as they are functional. I had a client that was a good friend, and we shared the same passion and dream. We had a partnership on a land speed car. Our goal was to do 200 miles per hour. We got close, but then it all came to an end. It felt like unfinished business. Sometimes, you just have to start over. So I'll just, we'll just see what happens up here. Oh. Okay, Brennan, can you come my way? There you go. Don't take out my lights. Brennan, we can come down a little bit. Brennan. Come down, Brennan. All right, right there. Sweet. Good job, guys. Good teamwork. The chassis is gonna hold it, the body together when it's all said and done. So now we got basically our, our outer skeleton kind of formed. It's really tight around the body and the roof line and the side of the cars. We got our, our floor made up. We got a pretty good idea what we're doing with our, our rear tail section, how far back it's going, how high, all our clearances there, wheel wells. So that's why we took the body off. Now we can, we can finish the rest of the chassis, the rest of the tubing, fabricating all that without the interference of the body. Then we can get up in here get some really nice welding on the top section, which is very difficult with the body. It's, it is doable, but it, it makes it difficult and you can now do a better job. Everything's got an order in which it's got to go in, but all in all, it's going pretty well. Now, there's a lot of stuff just partially done and there's a reason for that. We had to, we had to figure out where, where uh, tube A is going to go. So tube, to B later on when the body is not on, has a place to go to. Um, there's actually a pile of tubes over here that are fit and ready to go into certain places, but we didn't really want them to go in there yet, but we needed to know how long they're gonna be and gaps and distances and all that. All right, this tube is all ready to weld. You can take a look here. Uh, notice, notice how tight this fit is and how well prepped it is. Does it have to be that tight? Does it have to be that well prepped? No, but you're gonna get a better finished product at the end. So that's why we do it that way. You take the extra time, you get to fit and finish. It shows through all your work. If you can do it right now at the raw stage, imagine at the end what it's gonna show like. So now we'll weld this, it's gonna weld great. Let's make it happen. So we just do a, a little, little light tack to get started here. Notice my tacks are definitely smaller than the weld, quite a bit smaller. Your tack shouldn't show through after you're welded over it. You should have no idea where you tacked it. And just keep noticing how I just, I'm constantly moving around, I'm moving the torch around to make things work. Now there's some times where I'll just, 
I'll weld like a quarter inch and then reposition again. But that quarter inch has to be perfect. And you have that same mentality throughout the whole weld around the tube. Don't just fudge it because you're, you're close to the end and it's easy. If you want to do something easy, do something else. This ain't it. Keep that post flow on there. That's really important. There's a reason there's a post flow knob on your welder. If you don't know what it does, you should probably read up on it. That is a good example. Yeah, you can see the, the smoke coming out of here. What that is, the impurities inside this tube, there's oil and residue and stuff. That's actually like smoldering a little bit and and it, it expands because this area is now heated up. It's called a gas relief hole. If you don't drill that, your weld, when you get close to finishing your weld, it'll actually blow the weld out. It'll make its own gas relief hole for you. Then you gotta go back, grind that out, and weld it again when it's cold. It's kind of a pain in the butt. That's how you learn you need a gas relief hole, usually by a, uh, by doing it the hard way. All right, we're back in the middle again. Now, earlier we welded around our X tubes. We did the tops, we did the bottoms. These tubes here, I guess you can call them whatever you want, we already had these pre-fit. Now we touched them up around the new welds so they fit perfect again, and you can see where they fit, there's no gaps. These things are perfect. There's also no pressure, there's no stress. These things fit perfect in here. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, but it is well, well worth it. All right, making an X, very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. You can definitely struggle on it. Make yourself a simple tool, okay? <coughs> when when you have an X, you got a full length tube and you have two partial tubes. Your two partial tubes should be parallel with each other, okay? You should be able to put this in here and not have a gap. It shouldn't fit like that. It shouldn't fit like this. It shouldn't be cocked over a quarter inch. It should be perfect. You might screw this up a few times and that's okay. Do it again. That's how you learn. Same thing with these tubes. We want these parallel with each other. Look at that. That fits perfect. That's how it should fit. Not only does a makeshift tool fit in there, but our tube fitment is perfect on all sides. This, I've seen people take a day doing this before. Uh, if you're really proficient at it, you could have it done in an hour or two. However long as it, as it takes, make sure you do it right. Spend some time. You're going to build a car like this. You're going to be putting a lot of diagonals, a lot of X's in. So, you know what? If you're not good at it, you better get good at it. Don't start out half-assed. Do it all at the same quality level. If this quality of the, your car you're building is going to be a 9 out of 10, everything you do on the car has to be a 9, if not better. No cutting corners. All right, so here we go. We're going to tack this tube in, and then we'll weld the tops. Once the tops are welded, we flip the chassis over, we'll do the bottoms. Hi everybody, welcome to Grismo's Garage. Thank you for watching our show. You know, 
it would be really great if you'd hit the subscribe button over here. And there's a bell over here someplace too. If you ring that, then we can make sure you know when new episodes are coming out. We really appreciate you being around. So uh, I'll just sort of awkwardly sit around and play some music while you do that. Take your time. So thanks once again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.